Hello! So I've started a read-through of all the books set in the realm of the Elderlings, written by Robin Hobb. Uh, I know there are about 12 out there right now, uh, I think more are coming, but I've read nine of them before, so I've read quite a lot before, but it was years and years ago, and I just thought that I'd start from the beginning, I might as well. So I've read the first three books so far, which is a trilogy called the Farseer Trilogy, and that is what I was going to talk about today. So the Farseer trilogy consists of three books, obviously, and the first one is Assassin's Apprentice, the second one is Royal Assassin, and the third one is Assassin's Quest. Now, as I said, I've read these books before, so I might be slightly biased by nostalgia or something because I really did love them years and years ago when I read them. I've read them several times actually <laughs> and especially the first book is quite dear to me so so this trilogy is really like a coming of age story for a boy that we meet at first in the first book when he is about six years old. He can't remember anything from before this point but when he is six years old, he is being taken to the town of Bucky by who we think is his grandfather. And he's being taken there because he is a royal bastard. He is the bastard son of the king-in-waiting chivalry, as he is called. And uh, the grandfather apparently decided that this mother that we don't ever get to meet or know anything about really uh, shouldn't take care of the boy anymore and uh, the, the prince and the king-in-waiting should take responsibility for his son. And so he's being left there in the hands of a stable master uh, who's called Burrich. I'm not sure exactly how to pronounce that name, but I call him Burrich. Uh, we don't ever really get to meet this little boy's father either because he renounces his title as king-in-waiting and leaves. So the boy just stays in the care of the stable master, Birch. The boy doesn't really have a name. Since he doesn't remember anything from the point uh, where he's six years old, he can't even remember his own name and he doesn't have one for a very long time, but we call him Fitz. And later on he takes on the name of Fitz Chivalry. He is being raised partly in the stables by the stable master and later on he is taken up to the keep where the royal court is and uh, is given a room of his own where he lives uh, for the remainder of the series. One night, not long after he gets this room, he gets a visitor in the middle of the night. Uh, it's an old man who pretty much pops out of the wall and asks him to follow him up a staircase um, where he is being informed that he will learn the trade of a royal assassin. And so an assassin's apprentice is born. Uh, this is when he's very young, obviously, he doesn't do very much assassin work in this first period of his life, but his skill is needed more later on when the Six Duchies, which is the name of this whole country really, uh, is at war with raiders called the Red Ship Raiders. They're an outside threat that comes in and they don't raid as much as just destroy and make people lose their humanities and nobody knows how they do this. They just, they kind of take the humanity out of them. I think they remember who they used to be, but the humanity is just burned out of them and they become crooks and horrible, horrible people. And Fitz, as a royal assassin, is given the task of controlling this and taking care of these people that uh, the court feels should die instead of you know, continue to live because it's nicer, it's a better fate for them than what has been done to them. Now, in this world, there are two types of magics. One is what is called a royal magic, and that is just because it is mostly found in the royal family. It is called the skill and has something to do with mind control. Uh, you can uh, get into another person's mind and change the direction he's going uh, or something like that and you can also communicate with other people who are skilled 
and Fitz being of the royal family, even though he is a bastard, he has the royal blood, he also has the skill. And later on in the books he gets to learn how to control it. He's kind of a loose cannon there, but I won't say too much because spoilers. The second magic is called the wit and is despised by everybody in the six duchies and is therefore being held very secret by the people who has the wit. And that has to do with animals, communicating with animals, working with animals, and you can also bond to a certain animal um, where you form some sort of life bond deeper than friendship, partner kind of thing with, with this animal that you've bonded with. Fitz obviously has this magic as well, which is obviously being kept secret for his own safety. The wit is kind of being looked at the way we used to look at people who were witches. Um, it's very much feared and despised and people who are discovered to have the wit are being punished in pretty much the same way as witches were in our own world. Now Burrich, the stable master who has the care of Fitz when he is younger, he knows about this pretty much almost right away that Fitz has the wit and he doesn't like it at all and he tries to suppress it. Um, he also doesn't like this magic but he understands it and he understands that that he has to protect Fitz from being discovered with it but he tries to suppress it in him because he thinks that if you bond with an animal you don't you kind of become the beast that you're bonded to this isn't exactly true Fitz uh, keeps using the wit obviously anyway and he uses it for a lot of good it it's, it helps him out out of a lot of <laughs> sticky situations and uh, I think it's a really nice touch in the book actually. He bonds with several different animals throughout this series and just get you start to care for the animals like more, almost more than you care about the people or at least as much, which I really really liked. I'm a big animal lover and I found it nice that animals in this series had their own kind of characters. These are obviously fantasy books which, which you might have guessed since there are magics and stuff in them. Um, and it is also being held at a royal court, uh, which pretty much means that there is a lot of royal court intrigue. And there definitely is. There's There are the bad people and there are the good people. And you ha really hate the bad people and you really love the good people. Fitz is caught up in all of this, obviously. Being a royal bastard, he shakes up the court when he gets there and he keeps shaking it up in different ways throughout the series just by being there really and by doing the things that he does without spoiling anything. So the first book in this series is my absolute favorite. I don't have a bad thing to say about it. It's just, it's amazing. It's so amazing. It's not that long actually. Well, okay. It's a little bit long, but it's not that long. It's about 435 pages. Um, so yeah, it's not it's not that long for a fantasy novel, I'd say. But it just it's, it's so good. I loved everything about this book. I loved it the first time I read it, I loved it the second time, the third time, and yeah, I think three times is one of <laughs> all the times I've read it. But even though it's not that long, you get really, really invested in the story and you're interested in everything that happens. The characters are extremely vivid. I will say it's a little bit character driven, not that it doesn't have a plot, but it's it's a lot of character development through all the books really. Uh, but you just get to know the characters really well and you care for them or you really, really hate them when it's the bad ones. And I, I just got really, really invested in it. And at the end of it, even though I knew exactly what was going to happen, having read it before, I, I mean, I cried a little bit through different parts of this book still. I, it just, it still affects me really, really strongly. And so I could not recommend this more. It is by far my favorite fantasy novel so far that I've read. And, I mean, it's the beginning. It's all about getting to know Fitz and him getting to know his new surroundings and his new apprenticeship as an assassin's apprentice. So it's a beginning, but it's a very, very good beginning. Five out of five stars, obviously. Now the second book, uh, Royal Assassin, 
is really, really good as well. I won't say anything else. All of these books are really, really good and I really, really recommend them. I can't say really, really any more than I've already had, can I? But it is slightly slower than the first one, I'd say. I had a bit more trouble getting through it. It could be because there's a lot of negativity in this book. Fitz is kind of whiny and negative all the time. If Kind of like fifth Harry Potter book syndrome, if you get my drift. He's whiny and can get tough to battle through the negativity at some points. It dragged a little bit more, but still, still a very, very good book. The characters are just as vivid as before and there are more de character developments so you get to know them even better. And I guess the slowness of it uh, makes us know the characters better. Uh, so that is a plus minus kind of thing there. Um, I gave this four out of five stars. The third book in the series, Assassin's Quest, is probably my least favorite. Still very good, can't stress that enough, but it is even slower. Uh, it dragged a lot for me at times. Uh, it's a lot of fits being alone traveling, uh, which leaves us alone with his thoughts, which is nice in small chunks maybe, but there are big chunks of that going on. And you just noted this, noticed how the story picked up a lot as soon as he came in contact with other characters or something happened. But it's just a lot of him um, traveling by himself and us sharing his thoughts really. So it made it kind of slow. It's also the longest book in the series. So I think this could pretty much be a bit shorter and uh, it would benefit from that. But otherwise, really, really good. The ending uh, is amazing, I think. I know a lot of people actually didn't like the ending of this trilogy, but I really did. It's, it's not cliche which I really like, and it answers question, but it also opens up for a continuation of the stories of these characters. So, no, I really, really like the ending. I think it wraps up the trilogy really nicely. Uh, obviously, I can't tell you much about the events in uh, either of these books because it will spoil a lot for you, and I really hope you do give them a chance because they are so, so good. So, so good. I gave this one 4 out of 5 stars. It's a slightly weaker 4 star uh, than Royal Assassin, which is the second book, but it's still, it's still a 4 star read, definitely. So that was really all I had about that. I will continue on with the second trilogy that is set in the realm of the Elderlings. That is the Lifeship Traders trilogy, which really has nothing to do with Fitz and these characters. It is being set in a different part of the realm and is a standalone trilogy uh, that only references the events of these books just like a little bit, but you can read them without having read uh, the Farseer trilogy. But I will continue on with them anyway. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. I've read them once before, I think, years ago, and I can't remember them very much. So it will be more thrilling for me, I think, because I remembered pretty much everything in these books. <laughs> So I will continue on with that at some point and I hope to make a review of that in the future as well. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!